Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Chasing Psychological Safety. Today, um, it's a big topic. And while I have agonized over how to put it, I've just decided to speak to you from the heart, because realistically, if we're not a team enough for me to do so, then we're certainly not a team enough for us to be fixing this. So the big topic is HR and the human world. Now, anyone who's been following me for a while knows I have a love-hate relationship with the role of HR in the corporate world today. And that's because um, I have seen some atrocities and that's, I'll be honest, and that's because um, I've seen HR departments that had marginalized themselves into being the supporting and admin role, legal and, and, um, and kind of accountancy role only. And I can't abide by that. One of the reasons why I wrote the book <clears throat> was because I was seeing bigger and bigger of a gap in knowing how to um, navigate relationships in teams between the um, IT and DevOps world and the HR world. And undoubtedly, I still believe that, that the IT world is the one that holds all the cards in terms of understanding and trying to comprehend how to make teams high performing by making them happy. Um, so again, I wrote the book so that we bridge those and we, we get to a point. Now, nothing much happened. And in our journey with people in our tech, I have to admit that um, when we have acquired new clients, we have acquired them around HR, not with HR's help. In fact, over the years, we've come to believe that the HR just doesn't like us. Um, I think partly it's because we have this obstinance of um, insisting that teams have to do their own work and that makes HR feel a little bit useless, I suppose, and fearful. No one wants to lose their role, um, but it isn't a role that is fulfilled. So what we offer is a way for people to analyze um, their data in terms of how they're doing in their relationships in their teams and then do something about it. None, none of that was happening um, through HR despite their better efforts. And um, it has always frustrated me that instead of being welcomed by the HR community um, with the idea of, wow, this is a tool that will help our people help themselves, um, we have been a little bit shunned. And you know, over the years, I've come to analyze kind of where that comes from and I've come to understand um, the, the really in great role that most HR is in and the really difficult situation that they have um, arrived at. Um, and I have grown to have a lot more compassion and empathy for what they're going through. And because it is undoubtedly horrible to know as much as they know about people and still not be able to um, translate that knowledge into less human debt. So why am I talking to you about this today, though? Um, it's it's for several reasons. First and foremost, I had initially, and many of us that, that provide tools and methods and frameworks to the tech industry have chosen to continue to bypass HR in a sense and speak to CTOs and CEOs directly because they most, um, most urgently need these tools. And this would, would work for us. And, you know, we're, we're doing perfectly okay sales-wise without HR's help. But I no longer think that's fair. And I no longer think that's efficient. I think if we take a step back and we look at uh, the gains of, we've talked about this many, many times, and now it's become, we, we were some of the first ones to say that, but now it's become public knowledge and, and widely accepted that um, practically the pandemic has served as a POC for remote and hybrid work. And with it, the questions around uh, outcomes, uh, types of leadership, empathy, and people's feelings at work. So now it's all of a sudden um, clear, mainstream, the messaging is there. What isn't there at all is the execution. So what we have is um, companies that are in this array trying to understand new policies and processes to make hybrid work um, instead of taking the big conversations. We have HR departments that have been marginalized to only offer an opinion on like hand sanitizer instead of what it would really mean. Um, to have people have genuine flexibility. So the meaning of flexibility is still up in the air. 
the um, understanding that we all need to be um, kind of conscious, aware, and working on our feeling and the feelings of others is still left unclear. And I think that is the biggest failing of HR. While I can understand um, how they've arrived at the position they've arrived at, the fact that they are not grabbing this opportunity and saying to leadership, look, we've done it your way for way too long. We know what's best for people and how they need to um, approach their behavior so that they get better. Um, let us at it. You will have a different workplace with stronger culture, less human debt, and more happy and productive employees if you let us do the things we need, whether that's, I don't know, buying coaching for everyone, whether that's big programs of of cleaning up the, the, the remaining human debt from all areas of diversity, of inclusion, and all the areas of, of, of bad culture, bullying, and toxicity, all of the areas of no psychological safety. So let us set it and we'll fix it. So the fact that they're not doing that to me is, is, is painful. And I think the translation of it, if we take the step back, the result of them not taking this uh, this moment to really drive it is um, is what we see happening in the tech industry with your Twitters and your Metas and so on, and what we see happening um, in terms of lack of def definition for flexibility everywhere else. So we are in danger here of losing this moment, and I need all of HR's help. Um, and we need to all come together. This is no longer blame game. This is no longer throwing the monkey from one team to another. It doesn't matter which department, which function knows more. What matters is we all have to take a stand because what has happened at Twitter should have never happened in this day and age. What is happening at Meta should have never happened in this day and age. For people to lose their job overnight and for all of us to just kind of stand by and be like, well, it, it is what it is is outrageous. And for all of us to now be forced in a situation where it, it is possible for our entire way of life to be thrown in the air in terms of work overnight um, is just not a sustainable situation. And the, the, the uncertainty and unsafety message this will, this will send is un, unfathomable. We cannot stand by this. So what we all need to do, whether you're HR, whether your IT is to go up to leadership and say, this is a people moment. This is not a tech moment. This is not a process moment. This is a people moment. And the number one thing we need to do is get people to understand that emotions are no longer banned in the workplace. They are allowed. They are encouraged. We need their help to do their part to take care of themselves and to do their part to um, understand and recognize the dynamics in their teams. And we need people to help us in this fight. There's no way we can do this alone. There's no way we can change culture. There's no way we can get you better leadership. Um, we need to do it together. And I'm very appreciative just this morning, I've seen someone um, talk about the fact that HR conferences are just samey and they're talking about this stilted mm, five key terms and then everyone goes home when the elephant in the room is naked or rather the emperor is naked and the elephant is in the room and there's so much more hard-hitting stuff that needs discussing and it never is and that's always been my gripe with hr uh, conferences that's always been my gripe with any kind of gathering of minds where those minds are not being utilized so that has to change well i've also seen people now um, walk hr if you wish right agile hr people that are willing to be honest and say this is not the way this is not what i presumed i was going to be doing when i went after helping people in their work lives um and i need this to change i need this to be better i need us all to be better um i've started to see those signals there are a couple of unconferences that do that there are a couple of hr professionals that do that just this morning i saw someone and i don't know if they will allow me to um quote their name or not but they were saying confessions of an hr consultant i can't create your culture an employee engagement survey is not to solve your issues um, I don't have a little black book of all the candidates in town. I don't, I'm not going to give your employee tough feedback from you. Um, not every problem is an HR problem. And my magic wand for fixing your leader seems to be broken. I mean, this lady is just 
magic, right? All of this is true. All of this is true of every HR professional. They should boldly say that to leadership always. They should say to them, you know who can fix these problems? You, you can, your people can. And what you can do is to make sure you remunerate them for it. What you can do is make sure you command them for it. You tell them, you bring them on the journey, you tell them you need them, and then you give them the tools, the permission and the recognition to do so. So really, I think that if HR had to choose one job, it would be to be super honest with leadership and say, we have all of these issues. They're all people issues. We do. We're not going to get anywhere. We need to fix them. I can't fix them. You can't fix them. Who can fix them is our people. What we can do is make sure they have the environment to be doing this human work. They have the permission, they have the support, they have the servant leadership, they have the tools. So what I need HR to do is instead of trying to buy the right thing, instead of trying to um, put enough coaching in place, instead of trying to navigate these hundreds of courses, is just talk to leadership and say, we have a people problem. People are the ones that need to solve it. Let's empower them and let's give them the tools. I feel like this, if nothing else, is the, the absolute minimum of a, of, a, of, a, of a message that we need HR to carry to leadership. And from here on, um, we are kicking off a new sprint of HR empowering focus, if you wish. We'll think of ways in which we can help move this message towards leadership um, through the software. So keep an eye on the space. And um, I hope this means the beginning of us all coming together to get to a better place because we cannot stand by while everyone is um, going to end up being in the same situation as Twitter and Meta. And we cannot stand by while people are dreading work, they're going through mental health crisis. We cannot stand by while people are being burned out and unproductive. We can't just let this lack of culture and toxicity and, and situation continue. We just cannot. So come with me and let's try and fix this for everybody. Have a lovely week and let's um, kick off the fight. Bye.